It's nauseating to look at all these stupid scruff at dupes. Uh, $100, like I really could use that for something else. Hey there, my handsome and pretty little cobras, and welcome back to the Cobra's Nest. For those of you who are new, my name is Mignon Cobra, and I make minimalism videos. So today's minimalism video is actually going to be one that is definitely going to encourage you to shop less, and that is de-influencing you. I love this trend. I see it all the time on TikTok, and I have my own variation. I've got five things I want to talk about. A couple of them are personal experiences of mine, and some of them are things that I just flat out refuse to buy. So if this could help you, I would love that for us, because 2024 is our stealth wealth era and we're gonna stop buying stupid shit so without further ado let's just get into the video let's get it let's go Woo. coming in strong we have the dyson air wrap as somebody who used to chronically straighten her hair i've always straightened my hair for many many years and then i think i decided to stop in 2019 and i've just kind of let out my natural hair pattern grow out i think that the dyson hair wrap is just one of those other contraptions that damages your hair i know a lot of people say that it doesn't but i've also seen on TikTok things like in the de-influencing videos where they like it really damaged their hair so I actually have a suggestion if you don't feel like dropping the amount on the Dyson Air Wrap what is it like 700 or something like that I think heatless curls will definitely do the trick that's actually what I've been using I have two of these I have a white one and I have a pink one and they've just been phenomenal you're probably wondering as a minimalist why do I have two the barrel is different the pink one is like a lot bigger which gives me like the big va va boom curls and the thinner one gives me like tighter ringlets, which are the ones that I use for my wedding. I think these heatless curls are amazing. I think that they do the trick and my hair is really soft. Like the other day when my mom was cutting my hair, if you guys saw that video, she was complimenting my hair on how healthy it is. And my hair is very like, um, I got it bleached to a level two and I came from a level four and it's really soft and it's really healthy, which is extremely rare for blonde hair. And the reason for that is because I never use heat on it. I'm not sure how much heat the Dyson Airwrap uses, but the point of this video is to give you reasons to de-influence you, to not buy it, if that's something you were thinking of. If you love curls as much as I do, I love me my curls, I think they're beautiful. My own curl pattern is not this thick, but I do love big va va boom curls, and if that's what you're going for, or even something softer, I definitely recommend picking up the heatless curls. One, I think it's a lot more affordable. Two, it's a lot more time efficient. You only need like five, maybe 10 minutes to just wrap your hair up in, in it. Learning it is kind of tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it it's like super easy that you don't have to spend any time craning your hand and going at a Dyson air wrap which I think is kind of annoying because I know I had that issue when I used to use a straightener and like straightening the back of my head was like so annoying I'd have to like use a mirror and it wasn't fun so I totally know what that's like doing these like heat techniques with these tools on your head so if that could have helped you and discourage you from the Dyson air wrap or at the very least try an alternative a heatless curl I have done my job here okay coming in at number two and this one I'm like super passionate about and that is skincare so last year I was really big on the whole skincare train I've actually always really been into skincare ever since I did my like project panning and uh, two years in no buy I had more disposable income that I could put towards something else so instead of buying makeup I really got into skincare I felt like if I had a good base I wouldn't need as much makeup I definitely found myself falling down the skincare rabbit hole so I feel like this is like a personal one for me and comment down below if you can definitely agree with this I kind of bought into the whole narrative that better comes with a more expensive price tag so I started buying stuff like Tatcha and I have not bought the Dior but I feel like I've heard that the Dior is in that same range of like very expensive but not that effective I've even heard some people break out from the Dior the Tatcha I've actually also heard is like very oily and if your skin can't handle it will actually break you out I actually had a phenomenal time with the Tatcha but the thing that I'm kind of trying to emphasize is that for that price tag drugstore does the trick if you were to look at the ingredient list a lot of these common ingredients you can definitely find at the drugstore maybe the packaging doesn't look as good maybe you don't feel as bougie but if what you're going for is effectiveness or even just to like not damage your skin and especially if you are on a skincare journey and you're trying to get rid of acne whether it be comedonic or hormonal I really do think that drugstore does a trick if just skincare and effectiveness and useful skincare is what you're going for you don't need to pay these massive upticks I don't think that Tatcha I got the abundance package one it's like the largest bottle I finished it all and I've just upcycled the bottle and I've literally put in CeraVe in there it's literally from the drugstore it's like it's wills it's like not even mine like I didn't even buy it I just didn't really feel like pulling the trigger and buying another hundred dollars for that little bottle it did last me a fair amount of time I want to say several months but as somebody like I used it and like I do, do not notice a difference between my skin like in my skin between the Tatcha and like the CeraVe and I was kind of like a uh, hundred dollars like I really could use that for something else like it wasn't life-changing but if you do feel like you want to try it maybe this is the only category among the list of things that I have that I feel like okay if you want to spend money on something maybe skincare 
would be it because I, I totally understand that like looking your best, feeling your best and having good skin, you guys can see that the only, I have skincare on right now and I only have mascara so there's nothing else on my face and you can see how dewy and glowy it looks because I put a lot of importance on skincare. So if you wanted to invest in this, fine, but this is a de-influencing video so I'm telling you that if this is from a money perspective, you don't need it, it's not life-changing, a drugstore product will probably do not only the job but like even better okay number three trendy workout clothes i definitely fell into this rabbit hole last year in my year of abundance i went hard on the workout clothes like i bought workout clothes from aritzia and i bought like so much workout clothes from lululemon it's kind of insane i think i did mention in my video when i tallied up how much i had spent i think i spent over like three thousand dollars it was obviously not in one shot it was like over the course of like several months enough that i made the clientele sale so as somebody who had personal experience with this i can definitely tell you that you don't need that much trendy clothes i will put a little caveat before this whole shopping spree i had like the rattiest workout clothes i had holes in them it was really embarrassing and i was literally going around the neighborhood for a run like nobody could see me and i, I did not feel good in, in tattered clothing so i definitely want to put that caveat i do think you should have a cute little outfit i will never tell people but, oh, you don't need trendy clothes. Just go for a run and something ratty. Like it does the trick. Like you're still just working out. I would never say that as a Libra, as somebody who's vain, somebody who loves pretty things. I feel like you should feel very cute. But that being said, you really only need two functional, adorable little outfits. One while you're working out and a second one when that's in the wash. Like if we're gonna be truly practical and minimalistic here, you could definitely have cute outfits, but you really don't need that many. You don't need seven. Unless you're like, you know, it needs to be washed and you don't want to reuse it. I'm okay with it. Like I'll, I'll use it like twice and then give it a wash. So maybe that's the only other caveat I'd say. Like if you need to wash it every single time and you don't want to reuse it. Okay, fine. I, I realize now that's making me sound gross. <laughs> But this is a de-influencing video, so fine. You don't need a bajillion sets. How about that? You don't need 20 sets. Let's go into the extremes because sometimes what is extreme to me might actually be like normal to other people. You don't need 20 workout sets. You don't need to have every set to match. You don't need... You know, I actually have like a little tip about that because I actually want to be realistic with these tips. If you actually do care about it looking really cute, a good hack is you can actually just buy it in neutral colorways. So even if it's not particularly matching, like black with white still looks really cute. It's very like Chanel-esque or maybe just shades of beige they enter match really well instead of buying like funky colors then feeling really restricted and it needing to be a set like I know some people have like a cute red set and like a cute blue set but they don't really interchange unless you want to look like an elementary school painting so I think in, in that suggestion if you must have more sets especially because it's something that needs to get washed I would recommend buy it in neutrals so you can still feel cute and trendy without like needing to buy that many sets to make sure that it's a matching set because I know it's really big in the workout community. Okay, coming in at number four, Stanley Cups. So I will first fully disclaimer, I really wanted a Stanley Cup when I first saw it. There was something about the aesthetic that looked pretty good. I love to drink water. I always am constantly drinking water. Behind the camera, there's my water bottle. It's actually holding up the camera, so I can't show you guys. It's Starbucks one. I love cups. I'm always drinking tea, always drinking coffee. So I was like, this this is it. This is screaming my name. Not to mention that it came in two beige colorways that were like cool beiges. They had like a white beige and then like a cool dark beige, like a turn to taupe beige. And I was like, ah. <gasps> I need that, like I, I definitely need that. But because it was so new at the time, I didn't know where to buy it. I think it's like, maybe now you can buy it in Canada, but at the time, I, I think it was like only American. So I was like, I can't, I can't have one. And so time went by and like I slept on it. And by the time the hype kind of passed and like everyone has it and now everyone's critiquing the Stanley Cup and apparently it's 60 bucks. I don't know, maybe you can get it for 40 on discount. I was like, I'm actually kind of glad that I didn't end up getting one, especially because like the straw, I heard like that's not really good for your lips to constantly do that motion. Like it creates what's called like cigarette lines. So in that sense, if that's something that I could use to discourage you from getting a Stanley Cup because I know they're super attractive. Like I'll admit, I think they're actually really attractive, especially if you get in a colorway that you like. Like it looks, it makes you look so put together and I can see why so many teachers buy it. Like I'm a teacher and when I see like you're holding it together, it's like you just get this feeling like she's got her shit together. <laughs> So I think that's the allure, but you can definitely get that vibe with like a much aff more affordable cup. Of course, I will never recommend a dupe. I'm somebody who's against dupes. I had this issue with the little Ugg scruffettes. I have seven pairs of dupes of the scruffette. Like I have the scruffette and I have six other pairs. It's like, it's nauseating to look at all these stupid scruffette dupes. So I will definitely not give the tip that you should buy a dupe. If a dupe works for you and you're satisfied, go for it. But that will be a tip I will never give. But what I can recommend is look at other cups of other brands that are more affordable, that give you that same cute vibe. And if you're really just buying the Stanley Cup for the color, because I kind of have a theory, I think people buy it for the color. Because people buy multiple Stanleys 
in different colors. So I'm trying to think that this is a color issue. So if it's just the color, that particular color you like from the Stanley Cup, like you really can get that in another brand, in a more affordable brand. Or I, I like to think that if it's a color you already like, you probably already have something that's similar to that. So I feel like pass the Stanley Cup and use what you already have. Or if you must have a new one, I think you can get it from that same color from like another company that's like not a dupe, not a Stanley, where it's still making you feel like you need a Stanley. And if you must have a Stanley, pick one and one colorway and call it a day. You don't need three, you do not need four. It doesn't need a friend and it certainly doesn't need the, all these Stanley accessories. You don't need to put a bow on it and you don't, and you certainly don't need to give it a knapsack. I've seen those, they were really cute, but I'm telling you no. <laughs> Admire it on TikTok, but you don't need it in your house. Okay, coming in at number five, maybe Botox. I know this is like super controversial and full disclaimer, I'm in my 30s. So I feel like I kind of have a little bit of a right to talk about this. When I was in my 20s, I felt like I didn't really have much of a right because it's kind of like, you're just saying that, but once you start getting wrinkles, you might have a different opinion. I finally have wrinkles. So I feel like I can finally talk on this topic and we're gonna go in order. I wanna talk about baby Botox and then I wanna talk about filler and give my personal take. They may be controversial, they may not be popular. They're probably not popular because I know a lot of people get them. So this is just my personal take. Comment down below if you agree or disagree with these. I'd actually like to hear it because this has been like my own personal struggle especially as like i now enter aging i know that sounds ridiculous 30s aging but you have to understand i grew up in a western society where like god forbid a wrinkle so okay so coming in at with baby botox i was under the impression growing up that botox was like something you did in secret or like low-key like in your 50s in your 60s that was the impression i had of the function of botox clearly i'm not in the loop because apparently like there's preventative Botox and baby Botox, which you can start getting in your, like your 30s and 40s. And now is apparently a, t a trend on TikTok to be like, just get it when you're like in your 20s. So like you never need to do it when you're older. So just start doing it now. I've seen like dermatologists on TikTok. One video that I watched mentioned that the toxins, cause it is still a neurotoxin. The toxin is be becomes like less and less effective with time. So you definitely want to start as late as possible to have the optimal effectiveness. I, ha I have heard some people say that like by the time you start using it, the fine lines have already set in. So like, you're like already late to the party, which is like almost fear mongering. It makes me afraid. I'm like, am I late to the party? So full disclaimer, I have these, I think they're called the smile lines and I'm finally starting to get this. I had never had that before. I mean, obviously I was younger, but I'm finally starting to get this. And so I was like, should I get baby Botox? Should I be preventative? Like, you know, I don't have kids. So I have a little bit more disposable income that I could spend on myself. But the conclusion that I came to, and this is the de-influencing part was like, I think I'm gonna go with the more traditionalist route. I really like the French way of aging. I read the book, it's like French women don't age or French women don't get facelifts. And in it, it was just kind of talking about where it's like, there's a lot of women in France. I don't know, maybe this has changed. This is an older book. This book is from the nineties. French women just embrace looking old, like not old, looking good for their age versus like in LA, like at, at like parties, as everyone is like of an indiscriminate age. She almost starts to look kind of alien versus in France, grandmas don't try to compete with their granddaughters and so i kind of decided i want to embrace that to a point where i can no longer stand it so that's the route i'm going to take i don't want to do baby preventative botox i kind of want to age well and then when i really feel like okay you know what Let, let's start it i told myself not in your 30s i said like in your 40s you could start but not in your 30s so that's my own personal take and i'm a minimalist and i'm a bit more radical and i don't really like to follow the trends and i don't know where this baby botox is going to go but Botox for people in their older age has been studied and documented, so I'm gonna go with the safer route. So if that can help anybody else out feel a little bit more discouraged about doing baby Botox or feeling like they're behind the trends, I feel like just start when you're later. That's just me, that's what I plan to do. So I know this is like super personal, I'm not telling anybody else to do, but uh, there's more research on older Botox than there is on young Botox. Okay, the other thing, B, I guess, and this, that was A and this is B, lip filler. Filler is very damaging to your skin. It causes pretty much cell death. So when I see that, I'm like, Hmm. As somebody who, for me, I have, a, I have a really strong mantra, health is wealth. I always say that in my videos. Being healthy is the most important thing. That is, I feel, the foundation of true beauty. If you're healthy, everything else looks good. But if you have necrosis, and that's why a lot of lip filler, not shaming people who get it, if anything, shaming the doctors, or even this whole industry as a whole. When the lip filler doesn't look good, it look, it looks lopsided, it's because it's just not healthy. Like you really shouldn't be having that in your lip. I know you're gonna argue, but some people look great in it. Obviously I would want for everyone who gets it done to always look great, that's that's the whole point. But coming back to this idea that health is wealth, you, we look best when there's health involved in it. Asymmetry and all of that, that's an indicator of like not health. So it's probably better to address the underlying issue. Like if lips are lopsided, it might be because you don't talk like properly, which might be actually like a jaw thing. 
putting more filler up here to, to like balance it out you're still going to keep talking like this i'm not criticizing or critiquing anybody i'm just bringing to the table that my personal take on lip filler and why i probably will never get it done not because i don't think it looks gorgeous I am obsessed with big lips. Um, actually, one of my favorite features of my husband, my husband has massively thick lips. I think it's highly attractive. My best friend also had massive lips. I think big, thick, juicy lips, that like ethnic thick lip is extremely attractive. I'm of European descent. I don't have full lips. I have very thin lips. I think my bottom lip is like not bad, but my top lip is very typical European, which is not in. Growing up, I used to be praised for my thin lips. And then somewhere around the Kylie era, then, then, then my lips were out. But by that point, I've kind of already learned trends come and go, so I could I could really care less. But my point being is, I think big lips are very beautiful, and I was so, so, so tempted. But what stopped me from doing it is, like, if I get necrosis in my lips, I'm going to kick and scream. Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I can't stand for something to look disfigured on my face. So that, to me, that risk does not compensate how pretty I could look with lips. Like, I look fine right now. Like, if anything, I'll, that video that I made about pretty privilege is, I know on the internet, a lot of people already think I look good. So me chasing more pretty privilege is going to make me look disfigured. And then in which case, I won't even stand to, like, look at myself. No one's going to look at me and think I look pretty. People are going to think, wow, her lips look botched. So because of that, I just don't want to risk it. And so that's why I'm not getting lip filler and probably never will. Especially because I know that these are trends. Watch. All you need is for a trend for all of a sudden thin lips to come in. You're going to dissolve your lips and then it's going to deflate and it's just going to... You're just really going to regret it. Do you guys remember when microblading was in? I've seen enough videos on TikTok now where microblading is out because it's chuggy. So I just feel like I think this is one of them too. So I just rather not damage my natural lips. So I hope that that could help somebody else out because I feel like lip filler is so on trend right now. I've seen so many like TikTok trends about how it's like super in. If you're blessed with full lips, I am so jealous, like so jealous. But at the same time, I need to respect my own lips tissue and I don't want to deal with necrosis. So because of that, I'm just like, eh, I'm just going to write out these thin lips and call it a day. So I really hope that this video could have helped anybody else. I really wanted to de-influence you on really popular stuff that have totally influenced me. And if it influenced me, it's probably influenced you. So comment down below if any of these were things that you also thought about. I'd love to hear it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.